Neeli Trivedi from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. And as we know that we are covering the dynamics of machinery theories as well as numericals. So this is our last topic of balancing chapter. And the name of the topic is balancing machines. Now students, balancing machines are widely used in so many uh, so many industries and as we all know we have already uh, already know about our wheel balancing equipment so if you don't know anything about your wheel balancing equipment you have to go at any garage or any service station and you can have have, have and check it okay so this kind of balancing machines were widely used in mechanical industries to balance the system okay so here in our case we are only covering three basic type of balancing machines which are widely used in engineering particularly in industrial point of view now uh, first of all our topic is of static balancing machine so here Static balancing machine, we are, uh, as we see in our diagram, that it is just like the weighing machine type of balancing machine. So, with the help of the weight, we can balance any of the system. Now, as we all know, in the balancing system, what we often do? So, we often uh, balance our system as uh, the mass balancing system. We need to balance the masses only. Okay, so now in our case, let us balance the masses. For mass balancing system, what we have to do? So there is a support. On the support, there is a lever. The lever which is known as a beam. At one side of that beam, we have to put the weight. Weight should be uh, of exactly of the uh, opposite side of weight. It means just like we need to balance the mass of a system okay so whatever the weight at the right hand side we have to put it at the left hand side okay so here we are having the masses so right hand side is equal to left hand side both the masses should be similar now as we all know in our system because we are making so many products with the uh, with our casting system or any other system uh, with respect to any defect the CG of that system will may deflect it. And as we all know, if CG is deflected, the mass center is not exactly at the midpoint. Okay? It will be vary at right hand side or left hand side or slightly upward or downward. So that we have to put our mass on the other side of the weight. Okay? And then we will give us the slight rotation to our system. Now, by giving the manual rotation to the system, by the deflection of its CG, the pointer will give us the exact value how much it is deflected towards right hand side, towards down side or towards left side. Okay. And by this, by continuously trial and error method, we can easily find out how much the system can be balanced manually. Students. This is originally the manual balancing system. Okay. So it is known as pendulum type static balancing machine. Okay. So if any object is having very thin, uh, very thin thickness so that we can balance that kind of object in this system. Clear. Now let us have next topic which is cradle type balancing machine. So here in the cradle type balancing machine as you see the motor and the rotating part both are mounted on a cradle. Okay, hence the name is cradle type balancing machine. Now this cradle is mounted on a foundation. Now between the cradle and the foundation we are having two pivots as well as two springs. So as you see in the diagram. From the front view, you only, uh, you, you can see single spring, but originally the single spring at the front side and because of the width of a cradle, front side is a spring as well as back side there is also a spring. Okay, so that we are having two springs as you see in our side view. So we are having two springs. Okay, now uh, and also two pivots for the balance of the system. Now, 
with respect to the motor we need to rotate the part in this case we can have some major parts like flywheel uh, okay and turbine we are uh, which are using in day to day life we can balance that kind of part also now in this case it is also the cradle type balancing machine so that it is not exactly the static balancing machine but it will oscillate slightly hence we can say it is uh, just like the static balancing machine we only need to balance the forces not the couples clear now if rotating mass will rotate at certain speed the effect of that rotating mass will will be on the shaft okay and with respect to that shaft which is attached at the cradle the cradle will sway and by that effect we can find out how much value uh, we need to balance okay so this is the simplest type of cradle type balance machine this will use as a wheel balancing machine now what do we do in a wheel balancing machine we have to put some milligram weight or we need to reduce it as you see in so many wheels if balancing is takes place then we have some minor masses on that system so that we can balance it in mg milligram masses okay now this is our cradle type balancing machine which is used in day to day life is for the industrial point of view now let us have the dynamic balancing machine now this machine is also known as pivoted cradle type machine now how why uh, this name is like so we will see and discuss in our session now let us have there is a giant mass like uh, giant flywheel or giant compressor or uh, giant shaft okay so if we are having giant uh, turbines we can use the giant machines the balancing of the giant machine in the dynamic balancing machine now why we are using giant machineries uh, and the balancing of giant machineries on dynamic balance because if the machine is giant it is having the larger width and having the larger width will give us some amount of different planes value it means if mass is variable we are getting the different values of imbalance masses at different planes hence we have to study at different planes so that we have to consider the dynamic balancing machine now as the name suggests we can understand that because it is the dynamic balancing machine it will balance the forces as well as the couples which are generated with respect to the system so let us have uh, first of all we need to put the whole mass on the cradle and that uh, and that cradle is having the support okay and there is a rolling shaft so the shaft is rigidly mounted on on our rotating object our ro rotating object is rigidly uh, mounted on the shaft shaft is uh, uh, having some uh, some sort of balancing or some sort of support only towards the cradle now this cradle is having two amplitudes one is the left hand amplitude left hand side amplitude and another one is the right hand side amplitude okay now this amplitude what what to what is the working of this amplitude now let us understand left and right side amplitudes are mounted on spring as well as damper okay now by the uh, motor with the universal coupling the shaft is rotated when the shaft is rotating with the help of that shaft movement movement the whole big part will also move now they are trying to raise the speed of the shaft by raising the speed what will happen the effect of the forces imbalance forces as well as couples will be on the cradle and the cradle is mounted on spring and damper so that it will sway severely okay now it is having two pivot one is the locked pivot and second one is the free or released pivot now locked pivot will lock itself it means it will represent as a reference plane now released pivot will give us the exact value of that particular portion if it is balanced or not okay so here we have to first of all we have to lock one side of pivot let us say right side pivot we have to lock then we have to move our released pivot 
point by point or place by place and then we can get the values how much amplitude by how much amplitude the system is imbalanced and that amplitude is measured in left side indicator amplitude indicator and what is that amplitude indicator uh, indicate the amplitude of the motion it means a displacement x okay now then after that we have to lock the left hand side pivot and by locking that left hand side pivot we have to move our right hand side pivot and we will get the different values at different points okay and all that things are mentioned or measured in the right side amplitude indicator as well as they will, it will also give us the amplitude value it means the displacement value right by that calculation and by the help of the advanced system we can directly measure that if the mass should be added or removed okay now if we need to uh, add some mass then what we have to do we have to put that particular mass on a particular position uh, in x y or z direction on a particular position and we need to fix it okay uh, it is not like the magnetic mass we need to put we have to fix the mass by nut and bolt because they are giant wheels okay and if we want to remove the mass then what we have to do we have to drill it out and remove the mass as it is okay because they are giant wheels and because they are because they are like this we cannot uh, make and melt and again do casting and everything you know hence we have to just remove and add the mass according to our requirement clear so this is the dynamic balancing machine which is very 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 important uh, for the designing and balancing of flywheel or pelton wheel turbine or kaplan turbine or any other turbine you have studied in your previous uh, subjects so it is just like this if you have any query you can ask me this topic is very 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 easy if you read it once you will get it and in so many books it is elaborated very well okay thank you